Welcome back to Big Mouth and welcome to the DCEU Daily. Remember, you can tag me, speak to me and follow me over on Twitter at Movies TV Mad. Wow. Well done, everyone. Make the Batfleck movie. That hashtag is nearly at, I think, correct me down at the bottom, if I'm mistaken, nearly 200,000 tweets trending. Biggest trend. Think about this. Black Canary was trending with 10K tweets the other night and everyone was getting excited. This is what this fandom can do. And when this fandom isn't calling out executives and shit like that, and they do something so positive for the, for the right reasons, I love you and I admire you. It's absolutely fantastic. And if Ben wants to do this, it's fantastic. So on today's show, we're going to discuss what these trends actually mean in, in dollar signs, yeah? Is, is, it, is it as easy as everyone thinks, you know, 1.5 million tweets for Restore the Snyderverse, nearly 200k tweets for Make the Batfleck movie? What does it mean in dollars and cents? And how well has Zack Snyder's Justice League Snyder Cut actually done? in dollars. Well, we're not actually going to know that until HBO Max reveal those numbers. Now, I'm quite sure in a few weeks time when they do their financials, which they're going to do, we're all going to know how successful it's been. And they're going to have to be very um, transparent and honest about that. Um, but I think they're not going to be dictated to by us when they do it. And I think as a business, they've got to do it when they're going to do it. So um, you can't just announce that now. You've got to wait for the dust to settle. Um, I don't really want to know how it's doing now, although, uh, what is it, nearly three or four weeks now, it would be a good time. But even if it, we have to wait another three or four weeks, the dust has settled. I mean, now it's about the same amount of time as kind of the, the theatrical run would have lasted for. So it would be a good time to know. But it's going to be very interesting when we find out. Now, as far as I'm concerned, it's a success from what we're hearing. But I want to hear the real picture, right? Not rumours and innuendos and stuff from sites that can't really confirm those figures. And so it's all very well something trending by 1.5 million, 200k tweets. But that's got to transfer into money for, for the company. Obviously, as I said yesterday, this is not a charity. They're here to make money, right? Um, so we know that the Snyderverse fandom is there and willing and ready to spend its money. It's a ready-made, utilised fandom. That is very important. But how much money are we talking about here? Is it worth their while? Now, from the outside looking in, yes, it's very much worth their while to restore the Snyderverse and place it in a, in a corner on HBO Max. And so I think it will be very, very profitable. You know, you, you don't just get trends of 1.5 million and 200K tweets, you know, just like that. There's a lot of people pushing for the restoration of the Snyderverse. But what would it mean to make the Batfleck movie? What would it mean for Walter Hamada? Would it mess around with what they're doing with the Batman, for example? Now, we know that Barry Allen's going to reboot the DC Universe in the Flashpoint movie. Not officially called Flashpoint right now, still called the Flash movie. I do expect it to be called Flashpoint. I hope it's going to be called Flashpoint because that's what that's what the movie is. OK, so um, from Walter Hamada's point of view, is it going to mess around? Well, look, we all know we're heading to the multiverse. So and we all know that Snyder's described um, his Snyderverse as an Elseworld tale here on in. And I think everyone's aware of that, so it wouldn't be too confusing. It may be confusing to the normie, to the mainstream, but I would imagine the mainstream won't be coming in for a Batfleck movie or a Justice League, or well, maybe a Justice League 2 and Justice League 3. So it's got to be absolutely... Look, this is how you've got to frame it. Because I do believe that HBO Max will restore the Snyderverse. I don't think there's any doubt about that. I think the trends are too much. I think there's ready... There's money to be made. So you need a section over on HBO Max, which is called Snyder's Elseworld. That's it. Zack Snyder's Elseworld. 
Wouldn't that be a great hashtag, right? So the studio understand that we understand, right? That, you know, we're not, we're nothing to do with the central DC universe anymore. We are elseworld, right? I will be supporting the central universe. And by the way, there's nothing better for this IP than to have the Snyderverse Elseworld over on HBO Max and the central DC universe to have it all successful. And when, not if, when we restore the Snyderverse, I really would prefer it personally from my personal point of view. This is not a universal thing, me waving the finger. When we do restore the Snyderverse, I would really would rather not hear the bullshit about what's happened in the past with Jeff Johns and Ray Fisher and this and that. Once we restore the Snyderverse, those conversations need to cease. Because all we're doing is going to be damaging our own calls once we restore the Snyderverse. We can use it, right, as a tactic, right, to show everyone, to show the world what uh, a mismanagement this was from Kevin Sujihara from the very beginning. But once we get this done, we've got to remember that Joss Whedon and Kevin Sujihara are no longer there. So they can't do any damage anymore. And there's, an, you know, at the end of the day, we've got to understand this as well. That Anne, Anne Sarnoff wasn't involved with the inception of the DCEU and nor was um, Walter Hamada. Like it or not, right, the people involved in the inception of the DCEU were Christopher Nolan, David Goyer, Zack Snyder. They're the people who set this thing up and Zack continued with BVS and his Justice League movie. They're the ones that were there. Kevin Sujihara made some crazy decisions that just didn't work. And we've been through all of it already, how I said that I've spoken about Zack Snyder not being commercially viable. This is why this is the best thing for everyone. To have this Walter Hamada central universe, right, which is a commercial, commercially viable universe, and let Zack do whatever the hell he wants over on his elsewhere. Zack Snyder's elsewhere. I have to keep on saying that because I think I've come up with a great one, right? Zack Snyder's elsewhere. I wonder if we can get that trending. I wonder if we can start an event, not restore the Snyderverse, just for once. Zack Snyder's Elseworld, because I think that's got a great ring to it. So imagine it. I'm talking now to the DC stands, to the DC fans. Wouldn't you rather a successful Central Universe, a successful uh, Zack Snyder Elseworld, than wishing for the failure of the Central Universe? Because personally, we've got four movies coming out next year, cinematically, theatrically, and I'm really pumped. There's not, there's not, there's not one film I'm saying, ooh, not looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to Aquaman 2, looking forward to Black Adam, looking forward to Flashpoint, and looking forward to the Batman, right? So it's so exciting. So on top of that, if we can restore the Snyderverse, it will be a beautiful thing. As well as the stuff on the, te you know, the telly they're doing, HBO Max and the Green Lantern Core project. And, you know, we're, we're getting, um, we're getting, um, what's her name again? I forgot her bloody name, the magician lady. Anyway, you know what I mean. Um, so that's exciting as well. And actually the, the writer who's doing that has actually won a BAFTA as well. And so that's really exciting too. So the planning for the Central Universe is exciting. And I think if you're a DC stan, not just a Snyder stan, but a DC fan altogether, that's exciting. And as I say, on top of that, restoring the Snyderverse, which I think is going to happen over on HBO Max, Zack Snyder's Elseworld. I think potentially this is something so powerful and so strong and a really strong franchise at that. But Zack Snyder's Elseworld must never intermingle with the Central Universe. They're going to do whatever they want, right? They fear Snyder in the sense of the way he tells his stories, and they don't want him interfering commercially, and he doesn't want to do that either. And so this is the best way to go about it. The past is the past. I can't affect the past. You can't. You don't. You can't travel the speed of light like the Flash. So we can't, we can't help the shit show that started all this off, right? The poor decision-making. It's done. It's done badly. And all it does is show that Kevin Sujihara should never have been running Warner Brothers Pictures from the very beginning. You know, when you want to shorten movies down so you can get more screenings, right? 
instead of creating a solid DC Universe franchise for movies, then you shouldn't be in that job. It's astounding that he was ever in that position. We could have done a better job and we don't know what we're fucking doing. That's how bad he was doing as the leader of Warner Brothers Pictures. At that time, the leader of the Time Warner Company, the leader of the film division. It's all changed now. Warner Media have changed that. Warner Brothers Pictures are not leading the company anymore. They are a piece of the puzzle. And although it is interesting that AT&T don't want to rock the boat and rock their plans because they believe in their plans of what they're doing with the central universe. And Sarnoff is changing things for the better. For example, all departments now sit around the table discussing what they're going to do. That's important. Before, each department weren't talking to each other. So Anne Sarnoff is a major player and she has got great tools in her armour. Now, I don't agree with the hit piece she did. And, you know, she did that interview, you know, just before Zack Snyder's Justice League Snyder Cup was even released, was which was poor planning. And again, but this is the nervousness that they are. They're in. They don't want anything to damage that. And I think this go even AT&T don't want these central universe plans interfered with because there's a lot of money to be made. As you will see from, you know, Walter Hamada was the one who went after James Gunn when he was on the naughty step, as we've discussed before. His film is going to be very successful, which means one of the first decisions that's what, what Walter Hamada, what, as what Walter Hamada has made as DC movie films president is a successful one. And that will say a lot. And I know there's elements within our Snyderverse fandom who want him to fail. Um, I don't agree on Ray Fisher about Walter Hamada. I will never agree with him. He's not a racist. He did not obstruct the investigation. He clearly probably did want to throw Joss under the bus. But he wanted to do that because he was told to do that by his bosses. He had no choice. He's only the DC Films president. You know, he ain't God. He ain't the owner of AT&T and Warner Brothers Pictures. He was following orders. He likes his job. You know, becoming DC film president is a big deal. You wouldn't want to sacrifice that, right? So, you know, it would kind of make sense to just throw Joss's name un under the bus, but Ray Fisher didn't want that. Ray Fisher wants, wants to expose the whole situation. He wants to expose Warner Brothers and the whole of Hollywood. You see, they're racist. You see what they do to us? It's a political move from Ray Fisher. And it's a move to restore the Snyderverse. It's a bit of both for Ray. But I think he shot his last bullet with that Hollywood, Hollywood Reporter interview. If, if you're going to throw some things out there. But then I've said before that Ray keeps on releasing information piece by piece. So he may have more on them. I don't know. I would think it would be advisable for um, AT&T just to restore the Snyderverse. Because as I said, these articles from Zack's side and these hit pieces from Warner Brothers Pictures' side, it's it just embarrassing for everyone. You know, it shows, it exposes that there's no unity there and you can't carry on like this. But as I've already said, the past is the past. We can't affect the past. We can only affect the future. And the future should be this central universe doing amazing things. I'm a big Supergirl fan and I can't wait for Sasha Kelly's Supergirl movie. I can't wait to see her in Flashpoint. These are exciting things, everyone. And when you see that young woman posting and being excited about playing that role, playing Kara Zor-El, I can only be excited for her and excited for me and all of the fans out there. And I apologise. Yes, I love Zach, but I'm a DC stan as well. And I want all this stuff to be successful. And I want to restore the Snyderverse. I think we can, we, can, we can coexist together. And I think that's the way to, to look at this and the way to go at it. I'm afraid some people just don't want that. I'm afraid some people are just always looking for trouble, always looking for a way to stir the pot. It doesn't matter how much you bore on about what happened in the past. You're going to have to accept that Zach was part of the plan of the original DCEU. And that Zach and Christopher Nolan were there at the beginning. So, yes, if Zach was allowed to do what he wanted totally, we would have had a proper shared universe like the MCU has. I actually watched Falcon in the Winter Soldier. And I must admit I was wrong about that, reacting.
from other people's opinions and narratives about that and some clips. It was actually pretty fucking deep and compelling and great. And you should check it out. And I was just watching that and thinking, how amazing is this interconnected universe that Fag's created? It's what we were going to get with Zach. But there's a problem with that because the normies, the mainstream audience, weren't receptive to what Snyder was doing. We were. We loved it. And that was the deeper problem. So there was a problem with the planning from the very beginning in what they were doing. And it's everybody's and nobody's fault, right? And I, I kind of compared it, gave it the analogy the other day of killing someone by accident, burying their body, then killing other people who find out that you're a killer, right? That's what the DCEU has become. Oh, we've got to cut this out. We've got to do this. We've got, you know, you can't do that anymore, right? I believe that, I said a couple of weeks ago that the people running WB Pictures and um, the DC um, Central Universe, aka Walter Hamada, were incompetent. That was unfair. I was reacting to something that happened, something that was released. I don't believe they are incompetent because of what they've done since Walter's come in. Now, people will throw the Joker stuff at Walter that there wasn't a belief in what Todd Phillips was doing. Todd Phillips wanted to create this amazing DC dark universe, and they weren't confident about that. But they're the money people, right? And money people don't take risks. They don't bring in Todd Phillips, who's made a great trilogy of comedies, and just let him do what he wants. They didn't know. So they saw a billion dollars there. Now, I don't know if they're going to continue DC dark. I think, ultimately, that is a thing that can happen. Whether they're going to allow... Listen, don't forget what happened in the reaction to Joker. So that would have made them nervous with allowing Phillips to do what he wants, right? So as a company and as fans, we've got to understand where we're all coming from. You got to understand their hesitancy to things, right? And it's not like Hamada kind of kiboshed and cancelled the Joker movie, which he could have done at any time. They just said, just in case, because they were still scared after what happened with Justice League, right? So they were naturally afraid of the situation. So they let other investors come in. It's not a big deal. If they cancelled the film, I understand they were going, oh, look what Hamada did. But he went with it. He knew the film was great. He knew it had potential and it let it happen, right? Because don't forget, Walter Hamada could have said no to Todd Phillips from the very beginning, but he didn't. He allowed the movie to happen and be released, right? And yes, directors are always going to come out and complain. Oh, the bureaucrat said this or did that. That's the kind of that's the kind of thing. You're the business. You're the director. You want to make your film and you want people to leave you the fuck alone to make your film. But that never, ever happens. I want you to understand that. Right. I think it's what James Gunn said. If they gave me any, they gave me barely any notes. Right. But he probably did get notes. And he, he said, I ignored the stuff I wasn't interested in. Basically, he's James Gunn. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. You know why James Gunn can do whatever he wants? It's not because he's a real, not just because he's a talented writer director. It's because his films make the money and are commercially viable. And the, and the mainstream normie really like him. That's why James Gunn is going to be invaluable to the central universe. That's why he's there, right? Now, we love Zack Snyder, but the central normie doesn't. That's the problem. As a business, Right. And we we've got to look at this everywhere. It's all right being biased and angry every time says, someone says something. But as a company, you want to be a crowd pleaser. Right. Snyder's movies are not crowd pleasing movies. And let me explain. Let, let me flesh out the meat on what I'm saying. Right. Let me flesh out the fat off the meat in what I'm trying to say. Right. Zack Snyder's um, films are crowd pleasing to us. But the central audiences weren't pleased with Batman versus Superman. That was the ma main issue for the studio. I mean, they applauded the film when they saw it. We discussed that as well the other day. So they liked the film. They liked Zack Snyder. They know he's a good filmmaker. But if you, if you want to kind of look at what the issue is with Zack and why they want to burn down the Snyderverse, and, or he, he, eventually he will get his Snyderverse restored, as an Elseworld, as Zack Snyder's Elseworld, is because you just basically have to compare Zack Snyder and James Gunn. James Gunn is automatic billion-dollar movie, right? Makes money. People love him. 
They, it, basically, the normies love him. That's the difference, right? It doesn't mean Zach's bad and James is good, or James is bad and Zach's good. They're both great auteur directors. They just do things differently, right? We're all human beings. We live in a world with billions and billions of people, and we're all different. And it's okay to be different, right? Never castigate someone for being different. You know, if you're going to stick up for Snyder, you can't then throw James Gunn under the bus for doing things the way you don't like him, like being jokey and doing things like mainstreamy. James Gunn makes really entertaining films, and there is no question about that, right? Even his visuals are brilliant. So I'm really looking forward to his Suicide Squad movie and the future of him with this Suicide Squad universe. Harley Quinn, lots of different things, right? I would have been interested to see what other characters he could do, but we're seeing the future. Um, so this is where we're heading to. And so we, we need to understand where Zach's going to be. I, in a perfect world, would have loved Zach to be in control of the central universe and bleed it all into his movies, but that's gone. I was even kind of talking about that. I, I, after I was so excited when I saw Zack Snyder's Justice League Snyder Cut, I was saying, yeah, he's going to get the keys back. That was just me reacting out of excitement because that's what ordinary people do. That's what fans do. I'm just a fan, right? I haven't been in Hollywood or worked in Hollywood for many, many years. I did my time there and I decided to leave um, that situation. I like. I now live a very peaceful life here in Cyprus Um I get on with the network that I work with here in Cyprus and we're trying to develop the first English speaking dramas here on Cypriot TV. This was a thing I come up with after I finished with the reality show. And um, I, I was amazed that terrestrial television here in Cyprus doesn't cater to its expat, you know, British residents. And so I had me being a British person and a storyteller, I came up with these three or four ideas that we could develop. Uh, I came to one network and uh, we fell out, uh, should we say, creative differences. And now I'm working with another network. But we've been developing these ideas for a long time because these are really old fashioned, older people with old fashioned ideas. And it's difficult. But hopefully we'll get there. I'm going to have to find a way to create my own bloody streaming service. But anyway, so working in the industry is always very complicated. And it's easy to say Warner Brothers are evil and Zack Snyder is, you know, um, the angel incarnate, but life's never black and white. There's always a middle ground. There's always um, there's always that shade, you you know, that um, maybe you've never seen before, right? So in the middle, there's always that shade in the middle, isn't there? There's, you know, there's good and there's bad, but there's not just good and bad. You know, human beings are very complicated people. And the DCEU situation is a very complicated situation because... At the very beginning, when who I don't know if um, Kevin Sujihara was running Warner Brothers in the inception of the DCEU, I don't know who was there. Um, but the very problems began when they just thought they could bring in Christopher Nolan to run the thing when he didn't want to run the thing. So that's somewhat problematic. But as I say, right, you can fix these things. You know, the MCU had issues, not as kind of like... Because we don't know what was going on in the early days, but Kevin Feige's come out many times and said, "Fucking hell!" At, at first, it was a mess. We did, we weren't getting on. Uh, we didn't know what to do. It took time, but nobody was focused on that because he was the first one to do it. Now, Marvel fans didn't like what Feige was doing at first. By the way, there was a, a, a big reaction to him, but you just didn't hear about it. These things happen. The only difference between the early days of the MCU and the early days of the DCEU is. The pressure was on DC and Warner Brothers because there was already a successful, um, you know, comic book franchise in movies doing really, really well. So that pressure, if, if DC were the first, I don't think the pressure would be there. But there's a big, also, there's a big difference to having Superman and Batman in movies than having Iron Man in movies. No one had ever made an Iron Man movie before. There was no pressure, right? Luckily, Favreau made a great movie, right? But when you're doing Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman, the world's fucking watching and the pressure is on. There's a big difference from making a DC cinematic universe and the pressure you have to deal with there than making an MCU cinematic universe that never happened before. There was very little to compare it to. There was a couple of Hulk movies or one Hulk movie at that time. Very different. 
that and there've been a, you know free rainy Spider-Man movies. I think the Amazing Spider-Man film had been out by then, but there wasn't much to compare it to. Obviously, Singer's X-Men was pretty cool, but there wasn't as much pressure there. When you're doing DC, when you're doing Superman and Batman and Wonder Woman, the pressure is so high. And unfortunately, mistakes were made. Unfortunately for the people who made those mistakes, the light was shining on them and there was nowhere where to hide. There was probably similar mistakes made over at the MCU, but they were able to get over those mistakes. You know, Iron Man 2 isn't a very entertaining film, but they got away with it. There's issues with... Um, Ed, Ed Norton playing Bruce Banner. There was a lot of production problems behind the scenes that we're only hearing about now because Ed's come out and spoken about it. So this happens everywhere, right? I do feel there's a responsibility to people, though, not to um, not to paint, you know, executives as racists if they're not racists. Um, to call the Krypton production or call, you know, Jeff Johns a racist because he didn't want a person of colour to play Seg L, that doesn't make him a racist. He feels Kal-El is a white guy. He believes his grandfather should be a white guy. That's his opinion. That's not racism, right? We've got a Val L or Val Zod or whatever you call him, right, who is a Superman of colour with a different backstory. So why can't we do him? Why can't we represent him, Right? Why couldn't we have a show about him? Instead of a Krypton show, by the way, maybe that would have been more successful, right? We'd already had a pre-Superman show with Smallville. They'd done it. It was amazing. It was epic. So they could have done that. And maybe that's something to talk about and ask questions of. But I, I don't feel that people at DC or Warner Brothers are racist people. I think that they've made mistakes. And I don't think it's fair and I, I have been brought up on this by people privately, but I'll say it again. I don't think in terms of there's too many um, white straight men at Warner Brothers is a great thing to say, right? Maybe there should be more minorities there. I agree with that. Maybe they could. Get... Don't forget, my parents are immigrants. They were young people who came to the UK, Greek Cypriots, right? So I've got Greek Cypriot blood in me. There's no difference to what I grew up what I faced growing up to any person of colour's face. It's no difference unless, right, there's a difference between being a person of colour living in Beverly Hills and a person of colour living in a third world country who can't even eat, right? Can't even feed their families. There's a big difference. Always remember that. So I faced a lot of racism as well. I just don't go on about it every five minutes and accuse everyone of being racist. That's the difference. I try and educate people in my own way. Of course I do. I don't have any hate in my heart for anyone, right? I judge you on an individual basis. We meet, we chat. I either like you or I don't. If I don't like you, I won't be nasty. I just won't interact with you. I'll have nothing to do with you. I'll be polite if you talk to me. That's who I am. But I don't stereotype groups of people because I don't like them. And as, pe as, as white people shouldn't stereotype minorities and people of colour, people of colour and minorities shouldn't stereotype white people or white straight white males as um, racist either. It's wrong on either end. And you can you can twist it as much as you want. As I say, I remind you that my parents were immigrants. I, although I sound British, I was born and raised in the UK, but my blood is Greek Cypriot. So I know exactly how it feels being treated like an outsider here in Cyprus when we used to come on holidays. Here or in the UK being called a foreigner and other terms I won't use here on YouTube. So I know what it's like. You don't, as I say, you don't have to be a person of colour to experience racist, but you don't take those experience, experiences and throw shade on every single person that they're racist. That's paranoia. And as I always say, these conversations we need to bring, we need to unite everyone to stop racism, right? and educate racist people. But there's, there's a lack from a certain side of the political spectrum. They don't want to educate people. If you're racist, throw them to the, you know, throw them in the flames. No, people need educating, that's it. And if we educate each other in a polite, good way, then can, things can move forward. So I do not believe that Jeff Johns is a racist. I do not believe the executives at Warner Brothers Pictures are racists, right? They've got a lot to learn. Maybe they need to be educated a lot, and that's fine. 
It's how we phrase things. It's how we talk. And hatred towards anyone cannot be accepted. And right now, both sides are hating each other because it's the way people speak and people get triggered. If you find a good way of putting things, you'll find you can unify the world in a lot of ways. And we need to unify the DC family, whether it's fandoms or the executives working at Warner Brothers or DC. That's what we need to do. There can not be, we can't carry on like this. And this is why I think the best thing here is to restore the Snyderverse and move on from this. Restore the Snyderverse, Zack Snyder's Elseworld, brilliant. I'm happy, you're happy. We've got a, a commercially viable central universe. You know, it's very exciting if we can do this. And I believe we will restore the Snyderverse and I believe we will have a very successful central universe. Some people think it's gonna fail, I don't think it is. As I say, I think Walter Hamada is a very capable producer and we'll see how it goes. Now there's been films like Birds of Prey that didn't hit the note they wanted to, they, it didn't hit the note they wanted to hit. But at the end of the day, there's always misfires. As, as I always say, there were misfires, misfires over at the MCU. And I mean, they started a monster universe in Universal. One film later, it's not even happening anymore, right? At least the DCEU has survived its problems. It has, it's still here. Think about the problems at the DCEU. There's some amazing films in this franchise. Amazing. Man of Steel, BVS, Suicide Squad, Wonder Woman, Zack Snyder's Justice League, Aquaman, Shazam. These are all really, really good movies, right? So even though we've had problems, right, behind the scenes, there's so many good memories and great movies there. We're just going to have to allow them to reevaluate where everything sits. And where it sits is that the Snyderverse will be restored on HBO Max and we're going to have a very successful central universe. And as I keep on saying, if you truly are a DC fan, this will make you happy. So we've got to keep these things trending. We've got to keep on fighting. I'm with you. I am with you. I'm just a bit more open and honest with my opinions, right? I'm not going to, I could easily sit here and say the right things and hope that my subs go up. I'm not going to do that. Sometimes I lose subs from what I said. My last video yesterday, which was titled um, a great, fr a, a bad franchise with great movies, I'm sure I'm going to lose subs. I'm not going to win any friends from it. I'm just being honest. I'm just speaking my truth. There's no universal truth. When one person speaks, they're only speaking their own truth. And people are allowed to do it as long as it's not too toxic and hateful, right? And aimed at groups of people. That's something different that I don't agree with, right? Because of social media, we all have a voice now, right? And every time you hear one voice, it's, and then you'll hear another voice, and it's, that's the way life goes. It's no different than the world we lived in 30, 40 years ago, where sometimes we liked people and sometimes we didn't. The difference is we used to go home and leave those people behind. We, there's some people at work we didn't like, we could go home. It's different now, right? Everyone's in our faces in social media. And it's really hard not to react to some of these polarizing views. You're just going to have to accept people's opinions and walk away from those people's and their social media platforms if you don't like them. If you don't like me, you have to walk away. If you don't agree with what I say, you have to either have a constructive conversation with me or walk away. There's no other way. I will never change what you think and you will never change what I think, right? I'm a DC fan and I want to see everything being successful. I want to see what Hamada can do. It's interesting to me, right? I want to see Aquaman too. I can't wait to see what's going to happen now. I'm excited for the whole bag. And there's a lot of people excited for the Snyderverse continuing and being restored, as well as the continuation of the central DC universe. They're just too scared to say it. But I'm not scared of anyone. I will say what I want. I will continue to get the views that I get, whatever they are. It's random to me. It's random who comes into my videos. There's some... There's probably about 20, 25, 30 loyal people who come in and the rest are just stragglers. You're welcome. You're welcome to come to this channel. Everyone's got a voice. No one has the right opinion or the wrong op opinion. Everyone has their truth right. There's no universal opinions here on this channel. I'm right from my own point of view, but I'm not right universally. And that goes for the same for you. And none of us are perfect. We all make mistakes. It's no point holding up receipts. I've made a lot of mistakes. I've said crap I shouldn't have said in the past. 
hold out my receipts. I couldn't give a shit. I will stand up there and say, it's a mistake. I move on. I don't sit there going, oh my God, once I did this or said this. I'm a fucking human being. We do bad things and good things. Get over it, right? Stop holding people up to lofty ideals when basically you're as fucking flawed as everybody else is. Stop kind of showing re receipts to these WB executives, right? Because it doesn't work. Calling them toxic bros isn't going to work, right? If they're holding the keys to the IP and you need them to green light the Snyderverse, probably not a good idea to call them toxic bros. We have to find a different way of speaking, right? Someone wanted to do an event, hashtag toxic bros. Imagine that, doing a hashtag event where maybe it'll be successful, 100K, 200K, 1.5 million, who knows? But what message does that send to Warner Brothers? It makes you sound, it makes us sound like the toxic bullies. Maybe they think we are. So there's always ways of getting what you want. By being polite, by being um, calm, being like Zack Snyder, you don't hear him attacking Warner Brothers. He's clever, he comes out with information. He's very clever what he says, but look at how he was able to get the Snyder Cup green lit because of the way he brought the fans together, right? And convinced the studio to do it through being a gentleman, right? And this is what we've got to be. We've got to be gentle ladies and whatever else you identify as, of course. I'm still trying to learn those different kind of terms, right? Because I, I want to be respectful to everyone. And certainly everyone is welcome on this channel. I think the world we live in is beautiful because of the different people with the different cultures, with the different identities. Who wants everyone being the fucking same? Who wants everyone looking the same? Who wants everyone having the same opinions, right? That's one of the things I don't like, this trend culture, where everyone's trying to do the same thing and say the same thing. Yes, I like the events we do in those trends because we're trying to get something released. We're trying to right or wrong. That's different. But I like the world, the cosmopolitan world, different identities, different genders, different backgrounds. It's a beautiful thing, everyone. Don't fight it. This polarizing world we live in is changing because it's trying to become more accepting of everyone. But there's people in this world who are poorly educated, who are still fighting to live in the old system. But the people fighting to create a, a, a better world where everyone's accepted sometimes don't have the right dialogue. It's like some of us who come from the Snyderverse fandom. Sometimes we're a bit sweary, we're a bit aggressive, we go on the toxic bros thing, right? Instead of just being calm and polite. By being calm and polite, like Zach is, I think if Zack Snyder, if more people were like him, and again, that would be contradicting me saying everyone should be the same, but I think we'd get more things done in a more gentler, good way, rather than arguing, rather than fighting. We will restore the Snyderverse. We will have a successful central universe run by Walter Hamada and Jim Lee. But we've really got to understand something, that DC needs to be a place for everyone. And that part of Anne Sarno's hit piece was absolutely spot on. It shouldn't just be for one set of fans, it should be for everyone. And having a multiverse strategy, having the Flash reboot the universe is the best way possible. But green lighting the restoration of the Snyderverse and calling it Zack Snyder's Elseworld is also a great freaking idea. And I think we're gonna get it all and it's really, really exciting. So please comment down below. Please like, share and subscribe. And I'll be back tomorrow with even more DCEU Daily. See you again soon.